tendonitis, RSI, tennis elbow, definitely every musician's biggest nightmare. And today, we're gonna to be talking about it. Hi, my name is Philippe, and welcome to my channel. Okay, now before I go any further, let me just tell you something. I am not a trained physician. I'm not a chiropractor or a physio or osteopath or any of those things. I'm a musician and I had some of these conditions in the past. If you just got injured um, or you have a recurring condition or something chronic or whatever, um, by all means, please go see one of these guys um, because they'll give you way much better advice. So tip number one. The Powerball. Now, I'm not endorsed by these guys. I don't work for these guys. And to be honest with you guys, I was actually pretty skeptical about these things. So, a friend of mine actually gave me this one, which is pretty old as you can see. And I kind of busted it not, not that long ago, about a month ago. Now, before you do any, before you start with this, I do them, I just kind of like warm up. And I follow, I remember a very old video from John Petrucci telling about his stretches that he does before he, uh, he starts playing the instrument. And it's kind of like what I follow, you know, I kind of like stretch my, <sighs> stretch my, uh, my back, um, you know, stretch my arms, you know, I kind of like massage my arms for a little bit, for a little bit. Anyway, you guys get the picture, right? So I do, I first, I kind of like try to make the blood flow. I got this really cheap one. I think I paid like 20 pounds for it. It's like. I don't know, $25, something like that, $30. And the way how I use this, right before I start rehearsing or before I have a practice session or anything of the kind, um, I warm up with this. And I do usually three minutes on each arm. So I set up a stopwatch. I do one minute in one arm and another minute in the other arm. And it's pretty simple. You just put the string like this. You pull the string. As you can see, you start making this movement. Now, you keep the arm parallel to your, to your body, and you do this for a minute. Now, you don't need to go super fast on this, all right, because you're going to be practicing afterwards, and you don't want to completely exhaust your muscle. And then, after that, I pass it to the other arm, and I do it for another minute. It doesn't really matter the rotation of how you do it. If you want, like, I can give you guys, like, make a video more detail about the exercises I do with this. Um, and that's it, and I do one minute on each arm. And once you finish with this, what, what you do is, uh, be careful, don't use, don't do it with this part. I think this is how I broke mine. Uh, I tilt this around, and this was a tip that my osteopath actually told me as well, which is I turn this around and I just pass it on my arm like this, okay? This is also really good if you're a metal player and you practice triplets, you know? This helps you gain some strength in your muscle. So for down picking, triplets, that kind of stuff. Anyway, just remember, don't go too crazy on this as well because it might fatigue your arm as well, you know? Just, you know, have some common sense. I'll check some stuff on their website. They have some information there. Um, and for me, that worked really well. Uh, what I also do afterwards is I tend to put my, both of my, um, my forearms under really cold water, which is something that my uh, former teacher actually taught me as well. It's great to, I think, helps flushing toxins, whatever the technical term is. For tip number two, this might be as effective as a sugar pill. I have no idea. It might be just a placebo, but it works with me. I have these two wristbands for a very long time. Again, I'm not endorsed by any of this stuff. As you guys can actually see, this stuff looks absolutely shocking, um, but it's great. It just gives you like that extra support. Now, I use these. If you go in, if you guys go on and check out my Instagram, all of the videos I have playing in there, I'm using this kind of stuff always. It gives me like some support. Um, I feel that my wrist is more stable. Let's put it in like so. And that's it. For me, it works out. So hopefully it works out for you guys as well. Tip number three is, I think, a tip that everybody already knows. So what I tend to do is I pick up the guitar and I start with very simple stuff. So I start at a lower BPM. I put something like perhaps 100 BPM, something like that. And I do like a chromatic scale, which moves all of my fingers. And I do, 
uh, right hand exercise and a left hand exercise. I think the reasoning for starting slow and advanced, I think it's kind of obvious. Same way when you go to the gym, you don't, and if you haven't worked out for a while, you don't go there and you put, you know, the heaviest plates and start pushing. Or if you haven't ran for a while, you don't go and start sprinting straight away, right? I think the same kind of philosophy applies to, you know, to your wrists, to your hands, to your ligaments, to all of that stuff. So it's a great way, I think, of preventing future injuries. Um, start slowly and ramp it up. Okay, finally, the fourth tip. This one might be a little bit controversial, all right? I haven't been playing guitar for a very long time. I mean, I, I started playing guitar when I was about 17, 18, uh, but then I didn't play guitar for like 10, 12 years. And I restarted just about six years ago. The problem is when you restart playing the instrument again, you want to evolve very quickly. Now, the danger with that is that you'll neglect warm-ups, you'll neglect all this kind of stuff. But most importantly, you will go on and you'll pick up the instrument and you're going to try and play exactly how those guys play. For example, if you're playing Dimebag Daryl, you know, or you're playing James Hatfield, you want to do all of those staccatos and all of that. The guys that we're trying to copy are idols. So, for example, if I try to play something from Dimebag, I'm going to try and do the stretches that he did. The problem with that is that was something that was very natural to Dime, all right? Those big stretches, or if you're trying to play Tornado of Souls, you know, and Marty Friedman has like those, you know, gigantic stretches. It took some time to those guys to get there as well. And even if they're natural, it's something that is natural to them to play like. If you find some, some better way to play it, guys, trying to have fun with the guitar. Find a way to play it that is natural to you. And then if you want to, you know, if you want to keep progressing, obviously, you know, slowly and gently you try to go there. So my fourth tip is around make it easy for yourself. Okay, so those were my four tips. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I hope you find them useful. If you like the video, this is my very first YouTube video, by the way. So it's really weird talking to a camera, I have to say. But anyway, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, and um, that way I'll keep doing content for you guys. Rock on.